Hello, and welcome to the Cameron Peak FLA. This video is here to help you understand the incident and the content of this story map a little better before fully diving in. The first thing to understand about this FLA in particular is that it was incredibly complex. Just as an example, the FLA team interviewed close to 50 people in order to capture the events that took place in August and September on the Cameron Peak fire. The focus of this FLA is on COVID-19 and all of the complications that come along with it while on an incident. In total, the Cameron Peak fire saw 76 COVID positive cases and 273 quarantines. This FLA manages to cover the first 21 positive cases, which in itself was a significant undertaking. In order to do so, the FLA team ultimately compiled the accounts of those interviewed into six paralleling storylines to provide the full content of each separate event, while also, hopefully, eliminating confusion since many of the events overlapped one another. As we move forward, you will have the opportunity to see those storylines play out during the overview portion of this video. By this point, you're probably ready to know what happened, and the answer is a whole lot. The Cameron Peak Fire began in August of 2020 and was located near Fort Collins, Colorado. Cameron Peak ultimately ended up becoming the largest wildfire in Colorado state history. When the fire began to establish itself, the Rocky Mountain Blue Incident Management Team was assigned to take command, while resources from all across the country began arriving on the Cameron Peak Fire. All seemed to be running rather smoothly until the first COVID-19 positive case occurred on the incident, an engine boss on engine 137. The level of complexity quickly ramped up when during contact tracing at ICP, the engine boss needed to be transferred to the hospital due to concerns over his condition. The engine boss's fellow crew members consequently tested positive, while five IMT members were placed in quarantine due to close contact with the engine boss, and night shift resources also quarantined to await contact tracing for their potential exposure. It was at this point that the Colorado Department of Health designated the Cameron Peak Fire as a COVID-19 outbreak site, the same day of the IMT transition from Rocky Mountain Blue Team to Nemo and Rocky Mountain Team Black. Within a matter of days, ICP was moved, two on-site testing locations were stood up on the fire, and the engine boss was transferred to the ICU and placed on a ventilator. Meanwhile, a crew member off of the Southeast crew began exhibiting signs of cardiac distress at the Jack's Gulch forward operating base and was immediately life flighted to the hospital. Fortunately, he was cleared of any cardiac concerns by that evening, but his COVID test had come back positive. This meant that the EMTs who assisted him, as well as all of his fellow crew members, would need to go into quarantine immediately. The remaining 150 or so resources at Jack's Gulch, where he had just been, would also need to be quarantined until contact tracing could be completed, an endeavor that would require a lot of planning for a location without any cell phone coverage. Early the following morning, September 2nd, the logistics associated with the contact tracing began at Jack's Gulch, while at the same time, the Southeast crew member had been released from the hospital. To his surprise, there was no ride waiting to pick him up and transport him to the hotel for his isolation to begin, which essentially left him stuck at the hospital, unsupported, for more than 12 hours. As the situation with the Southeast crew was unfolding, engines 143 and 144 had demobbed from the fire and began traveling home after all of their crew members' COVID-19 tests had come back negative. On the same day that E-143 and E-144 demobbed, a crew member off of Engine 5 began to feel ill, but had assumed that it was altitude sickness. The next day, September 4th, the crew member from E-5 tested positive for COVID and was put into isolation, which placed two fellow crew members and seven close contacts into quarantine. That same day, a second crew member from the Southeast crew tested positive, while six crew members from Crew 38 received positive test results from the Jack's Gulch testing event. However, due to a manifesting glitch in the IROC ordering system, the IMT had a tough time identifying the firefighters who tested positive on Crew 38 because there were multiple crews from the same contract company on the Cameron Peak fire. Nevertheless, they managed to confirm the COVID positive firefighters' names and move everyone from Crew 38 into either isolation or quarantine. 
With the ever-growing strain that the effects of COVID-19 were placing on the IMTs, Nemo and Team Black worked together to create a secondary IMT, which would focus solely on COVID-19 within the Cameron Peak Fire. This was a decision that proved to be timely as a significant storm front approached just two days later that generated 40 mile per hour gusts on the fire along with a drastic temperature swing. And at the regional level on September 5th, an incident within an incident IMT was set up to help manage the complexities of the COVID positive engine boss from E137 due to his serious condition and the potential that he could require long-term care. Standing up that IMT was yet another decision which proved to be quite timely as that very same day, the engine boss from E-137 began to rapidly decline to a point where his condition could be fatal. Meanwhile, the COVID test for the engine boss from E-5 had come back positive. On September 7th, E-143 and E-144 had finished their r at home and were en route to their next assignment when one of their crew members received a phone call that his COVID-19 test had actually been positive. This, of course, created a lot of confusion, which resulted in both engine crews returning to their home unit then dispersing far and wide to their houses, many of which were in differing counties with varying protocols for isolation and quarantine. A couple of days later, back at Cameron Peak, another round of testing turned up seven additional COVID positive individuals. Five were from the Southeast crew and two more crew members from Crew 38 tested positive. Finally, on September 10th, the Cameron Peak IMTs began to get a little reprieve from COVID positive test results although they still had a complicated web of logistics to manage in order to keep track of and care for everyone who remained in isolation and quarantine. September 12th saw another IMT transition as Nemo and Team Black demobed and handed the incident to the Southwest Area's Team 3. As many firefighters were being released from isolation and quarantine, new challenges arose with regard to return travel home from Cameron Peak for individuals who intended to use conventional air travel and although many were being released from the incident, the engine boss from E-137 still remained on a ventilator in the ICU until October 7th, when he awoke from his coma, but remained in serious condition with a long road ahead. By this point, surely you can recognize the complexities that the IMTs faced during this stretch of time, and the frustration that many of the isolated and quarantined firefighters must have felt. But believe it or not, this video has only scratched the surface of the Cameron Peak FLA. There are many more layers to each of these stories, which are available to you within this story map. You'll find that there are several different options in how to navigate through the content. You could begin by reading any or all of the six narratives, which can be accessed by either clicking on the event tabs or on the individual event boxes. Any of the event narratives can also be downloaded into PDF form to read on the go or to share with others. The lessons learned from this FLA, of which there are many, can be found in several locations. Lessons relative to each storyline are nested below their respective narrative, while the full compilation of lessons learned from this FLA can be found by clicking on the appropriate tab at the top of the page or on the lessons learned box below. There's a lot of content to explore, so now that you have an overview to help you get started, please feel free to jump in.